Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about how to handle uh, the non normality while building regression models. Okay, so regression models are built for two reasons, right? One for uh, prediction, and the second one is for inference. In prediction models, we are trying to predict the target, vi target variable or the dependent variable. While if the intention is for inference, finding out the relationship between your predictors or independent variables with the dependent variable, you come across what is known as statistical test, right? Or significant test rather, right? Significance test. So here is uh, an example of the output from a regression model where we are concerned about to find out which one of these independent variables are significant in the model. So how do we get to know that? We look at the T statistics. So this is the T statistics we have with us and we look at the value and we see if the T statistics is greater than you know let's say 2.7 or not. We also look at the corresponding P statistics which is you know similar to what T statistics is and anything less than 0.05 we take that as significant at 95% confidence. right? Now if the intention is inference then the assumption of normality is important to us. Okay, The data should be normally distributed. For estimation purpose, in order to estimate a linear regression, you do not need, you do not need normality. You do not need the data to be normally distributed. However, you cannot explain uh, the uh, results by interpreting the values of the T statistics. So this test that we do here assume that you know it is distributed. The estimates are normally distributed based on the distribution of the data. That doesn't hold good here. Okay, and that's a problem. So in case you have deviation from normality, that's going to be the problem. So what is how does a normal distribution look like? So here is typical examples of normal distributions with the different means and standard deviation. So we do not care what exactly is the value of the mean and standard deviation. All we care about is that the you know the distribution should be bell shaped. It should not be you know uh, skewed like this or skewed like this. Okay. So it should well be uh, distributed normally to be able to uh, for it to give uh, a proper results in the uh, hypothesis test. There are many other reasons, areas once uh, normality assumption is also assumed. For instance, ANOVA also assumes uh, normality. Uh, so a number of uh, mean comparison tests uh, also assume um, normality of your data. So what do you do when there is a deviation? So firstly, you need to first test whether uh, your data is normally distributed or not. So one other way to do is you to visualize it. Okay, just visualize it and but there are better ways, statistical ways to do it. Okay, you can also uh, you know uh, plot what is known as a QQ plot, quantile quantile plot or uh, PP plot. These two uh, probability probability plot plot. So these plots can be used to find out whether data is normally distributed or not. So here is a typical case where you know this data point should exactly lie uh, on the 45 degree line. Any deviation like there are few here right deviations then it's, it's a sign of non-normality. Non now this is a typical case, case of good normality case. Now in a non-normal case your data will be you know distributed something like this okay and that's a typical case of deviation from non-normality. So ideally for a normal data your data points or these points the QQ quantile quantile point should be on this 45 degree line. Okay, now you can also do statistical tests like uh, Anderson Darling test uh, and then Kolmogorov Smirov test, okay, uh, to find out whether data is normally distributed or not. If it is not normally distributed, there could be a number of reasons. Okay, so without knowing the reasons why the data is nor, not normally distributed, you should not go ahead with any sort of remediation or any diagnostic, uh, you know, any diagnosis or 
any operation on your data. So first understand what exactly are the reasons for it. Well, there are many uh, possible reasons for your data to be not normally distributed. Okay, so there could be reasons like uh, you have extreme values or outliers in your data. If that is the case, then you will have problem. Like you expect, uh, let's say you expect the income let's, uh, of of a particular city to be normally distributed, but there are some people who are of high net worth individuals. Okay, their income is very high. So when you plot them, they do, they they lie completely different. Uh, from uh, the entire population because they are outlier extreme values in that case you will have this problem then sometimes you have uh, a distribution of data which is a combination of two or more distributions so you have bimodal and multimodal uh, you know distribution of data so here is a typical case you have this particular distribution and you can see this is not normally clearly not normally distributed right but this is a uh, this is just a combination of two normal distributions so this is one normal distribution this is the one and this is the other one okay and there is an overlap here okay so given that there is an overlap you see that it looks not normally distributed but they are actually normally distributed because there are two events or two processes which should ideally be separated rather than just be you know kept in just one data so that could be one another reason insufficient data in order for data to be normal distributed you should have sufficient numbers and there is no thumb rule as such that what exactly should be a sufficient number but ideally it should be more than you know 30 uh, more than 30 50 observations okay and the more you have uh, the more data you have the more likely it to follow uh, its actual distribution so always good to have more data then it could be a case of uh, that the data is just a subset of the main sample you haven't taken the entire data okay so if that is the case you have just left out a particular group in your data set or you have just left out uh, you know there is some sampling issue okay sampling error okay if you are taking let's say uh, survey data survey data and you have missed out on a particular uh, reason where you haven't done the survey which is of particular uh, very important for your survey but you have missed out on that then your sample may not show the actual distribution it could deviate from normality many reasons not necessarily in survey uh, data it could well be there in other types of data where you have knowingly or unknowingly Missed, missed out on a particular uh, a subset of the data in that case it could also be a problem then your data could follow some other distribution i mean there is no reason why every data would follow a normal distribution although normality uh, is very popular in most uh, real scenarios there are other uh, distribution which are equally um, rather they also uh, occur in real world uh, so we'll also see some of them okay so there could be many other dis distribution that the, your data could follow and there is no reason to have a normal regression for them you should have you know a different type of regression for them based on the kind of distribution they are they follow okay it could be beta distribution, exponential, gamma, inverse gamma, log normal, logistic distribution, Maxwell, Boseman, Poison, skewed, you know, symmetric, uniform, and there are many more. Okay, I've just listed out few important ones. So this is a typical case of uh, a, a Poisson, uh, Poisson uh, distribution. Okay, and so whenever you have, let's say, data for count data, a data that takes the count of something let's say uh, number of accidents okay that's a count right number of uh, accidents so that's a count so that is most likely to follow a uh, Poisson distribution instead of a normal distribution uh, or number of uh, deaths because of cancer that could also be the case okay so this is a typical case of your data 
which is different from normal distribution and it actually follow a different theoretical distribution. In that case, you do not worry because instead of a linear regression that assumes normality, you should go in for a Poisson regression. Then, uh, you know, this is a typical case of Weibull distribution, which is uh, survival time, like, you know, how long a patient survive after operations, you know. So that kind of a data will follow uh, this type of distributions. So you also need to look at which distribution your data fits in. So you need to all try all kinds of distribution to your data and fit uh, appropriate regression for that. So what are the remediation? How do you remediate in case you think that none of the other distributions are um, are uh, you know appropriate for your data and the data is near normal. I mean, it looks normal, but it's not normal, so to say. So you cannot say that it is completely different from normality but it is uh, expected to normal but it's not normal in that case the remediation could be like remove outliers get rid of all the outliers in your data based on some uh, criteria you could take uh, transformation you could take logarithmic transformation you can you know you can take square of your data points you could take square root um, such uh, you know even uh, so you take such transformation and see if there is change in the distribution of your data whether it is more closer uh, it's closer to the normality uh, the third could be if a data fits any other distribution then go ahead with that there is no reason why you would go ahead with uh, a, a, a linear regression with normality assumption for a count data a Poisson regression is any day going to be a better fit. Uh, and secondly, if you fail to have a linear uh, regression with normal assumption, instead of because there is not going to be a problem in estimation, you can well estimate your parameters even without a norm uh, normality assumption. However, you cannot explain some of the you know test statistics like t test okay significance test so instead of the parametric test because t test is is a parametric test parametric means it uh, assumes um, distribution of your data which is a normal distribution theoretical distribution a test which doesn't assume any theoretical distribution is a non parametric test so you can go ahead with non parametric test in that case so here are the non-parametric tests that you can use. So in normality case, you are using t-test, right? So in case it is not normal and still you have gone ahead with a linear regression, instead of t-test, just find out the man with me test or the moods median test or the crucial wallis test, okay? Uh, for, for, you know, exactly the same uh, purpose what uh, the t-test serves. For ANOVA, you can go to Moody's median test, crucial wallis test. For pair T test, you can go for you know one certain sign test. For F test, you can go for Levin's test. Okay. So these are some of the non-normal or non-parametric, where you know you do not have an assumption of in distribution is more appropriate where you know you do not have uh, the normality. Thank you so much.